Section 1 Introduction We're here to talk about large language models, LLMs, which have shown great potential in various reasoning tasks. However, they don't always get it right the first time. Often, we need to tweak the outputs a few times to get the desired result. This process of refining the outputs is based on the assumption that each new output will be better than the last. But, as we all know, there are no guarantees in life, and the same goes for this process. Sometimes, refining can lead to incorrect answers, as shown in our figure. This led us to think about a selection strategy where the model can choose an earlier output if it's better. Also, previous work on refining outputs usually assumes a single, fixed reasoning strategy. But we humans are more flexible. For example, a student studying for an exam might use deductive reasoning to solve problems and then use inductive reasoning to check their work. Similarly, a product manager might brainstorm a list of ideas and then prioritize them based on feasibility or impact. So, we thought, why not apply this flexibility to our models? We propose a modular approach to refining answers, which allows us to test different strategies. We've developed a framework called SCREWS, which stands for Sampling, Conditional Resampling with Selection. This framework has three main parts, Sampling, Conditional Resampling, and Selection. Here's how it works. For a given task and input sequence, we set up screws by choosing the modules for each part. The initial outputs generated by the sampling module are passed to the conditional resampling module, which decides whether to generate a revision based on the initial sample. Finally, all samples and revisions are given to the selection module, which picks the best one. Because our framework is modular, we can improve recently proposed self-refining methods by using other parts of the framework. For example, we can combine the MENT method with our model-based selection strategy to improve overall performance. We've tested screws on a variety of reasoning tasks, such as arithmetic reasoning, multi-hop question answering, and code debugging, using chat GPT or GPT-4. Our strategies have led to significant improvements, 10-15%, over the standard methods of sampling and resampling. We've also found that heterogeneous resampling, which allows the model to change its reasoning, can lead to a significant improvement over the baselines at a very low overall cost. We also highlight the importance of a model-based selection strategy that allows the model to revert to its previous more confident outputs, a crucial component for modern LLMs. Now, let's delve a bit deeper into the three main parts of our framework, sampling, conditional resampling, and selection. Sampling involves prompting LLMs to generate a series of intermediate steps, which has been shown to improve their reasoning capabilities. Some methods include chain of thought and adding, let's think step by step, to the prompt. Another method is, question decomposition, which breaks down the main problem into simpler problems and solves them one by one. Each of these methods has its own advantages depending on the task at hand. Conditional resampling involves using feedback to improve generated samples. The feedback can come from humans, reward models, external tools like code interpreters, or other LLMs. However, even if these feedback mechanisms are perfect, the resulting revisions may introduce new errors. Selection involves using LLMs to evaluate and revise the output. The most common selection technique is to always select the final output. However, this can lead to accepting incorrect changes made to previously correct outputs. Other selection methods involve ranking multiple sampled outputs or majority voting. These methods often use a homogeneous sampling strategy with changes in temperature or other similar hyperparameters. Our work extends the strategy to heterogeneous sampling and selection. In the next section, we'll describe SCREWS, our proposed modular framework for reasoning with revisions to tackle different reasoning tasks. Given a problem X, the goal is to generate an answer A, which in our experiments may be a string or a number. Screws consists of three main modules, sampling, conditional resampling, and selection. Different variants of screws are obtained by instantiating these modules in different ways. The options for each module are described below and illustrated schematically in figure. All of our methods will invoke one or more stochastic functions, where each function psi maps a tuple of input strings to a result string y that contains useful information. In practice, Psi deterministically constructs a prompt from the input strings and then samples Y from a large pre-trained language model as a stochastic continuation of this prompt. 
For a given tuple of input strings, the prompt constructed for psi will typically be a formatted encoding of this tuple, preceded by a task-specific instruction and several demonstrations, few shot examples, that illustrate how psi should map other encoded input tuples to their corresponding continuations. For concreteness, the prompts we use in our experiments are illustrated in appendix. Section Summary Large language models, LLMs, are effective for reasoning tasks, but their initial outputs are not always correct, requiring iterative refinement. However, subsequent versions may not always be better, as refinement can lead to wrong answers. To address this, we propose SCREWS, a modular framework that allows for different reasoning strategies and incorporates sampling, conditional resampling, and selection modules. Our experiments show that SCREWS improves performance by 10 to 15% compared to vanilla strategies, demonstrating the usefulness of heterogeneous resampling and model based selection. Section 3.1 Sampling we're going to discuss three different ways we can sample data for our model. The method we choose will depend on the task at hand. First, we have the answer only method. Here, we input a problem, denoted as x, into our model, which we'll call psi. Psi then directly generates an answer, y, without any intermediate steps. This is the simplest method, and the value of y is returned as the answer, a, unless we decide to revise y later. Next, we have the chain of thought or cot method. This method is particularly useful for tasks that require reasoning. With cot, the model is encouraged to explain its reasoning step by step on its way to a decision. We still define y as psi of x, but now we expect the model to provide a step by step reasoning process that leads to the answer y. The answer a is then extracted from y using a simple pattern matching method. The third method is sub question decomposition. Here, we break down the problem X into simpler subquestions. For each subquestion, the model generates a corresponding subanswer. It's important to note that we generate all the subquestions before we see any of the answers. This approach has been found to work better than generating questions and answers simultaneously. The final answer A is extracted from the last subanswer using a simple method, similar to the cot method. Now, let's move on to conditional resampling. Here, the result y from the sampling module is seen as a temporary result, which we'll call ycurr. This result is then passed to the conditional resampling module, where we decide whether or not to revise it. If we decide to revise, we resample a new result, y next, using one of the sampling methods we discussed earlier. The resampling is conditional because y next may depend on ycurr. We also have a method called selfask. Here, we use a function, psi text subscript, ask, which takes x and y c u r r as inputs. The first token of the result indicates whether y c u r r is correct, usually by starting with a yes or no. If it's yes, we don't resample. If it's no, we resample a revised answer, y next. In theory, we could repeat this revision process, but we didn't do this in our experiments. In our version of self-ask, y next appears in the result string following the word, no. This means both steps are efficiently performed by a single call to PSI text subscript, ask. For this method, we always use greedy decoding, which deterministically selects whichever of, yes, or, no, is more probable. Lastly, when the sampling module uses sub-question decomposition to produce a chain of sub-answers, we can check and revise each step, rather than just the final result. For each provisional sub-answer, we predict whether it's correct. The first time the output is, no, we resample the remaining sub-answers, yielding a revised result. In theory, self-ask could then be applied again at later steps of both the original and revised chains. Then, choosing among the many resulting chains would resemble branching in a reasoning tree. Section Summary The paper discusses three different instantiations of the sampling module for generating answers in reasoning tasks. The answer only method directly generates the answer without any intermediate steps, while the chain of thought method encourages step by step reasoning to improve the quality of the final answer. The sub question decomposition method decomposes the problem into simpler sub questions and generates sub answers for each sub question. The paper also introduces the conditional resampling module, 
which allows for revising the provisional result generated by the sampling module. The self-ask method is used to determine whether to revise the provisional result or not. Section. Tool-based LLM. In some tasks, we design our language model, which we'll call SciAsk, to be able to use tools. This is because, in tasks like fact-checking, it's not practical to ask the language model to verify its own output, as it may not have the necessary knowledge to do so. Instead, we can use tools to gather more information or facts that can help the model identify and correct issues in its own responses. These tools could be search engines or fact retrievers that can assess the accuracy of the information and generate a new revision. Other tools, like code interpreters, may not be able to generate text, but they can still be used to check for accuracy. The final part of our system, screws, is the selection module. Here, we either use a model we'll call Psi Select, or simple rules to choose the final result from which we then extract the final answer. This essentially allows us to build a simple combination of multiple systems. Just as we used a language model to evaluate the quality of the current output, we can also use a language model to assess whether the next output is better. We use Psi Select to choose between two result strings. We found that the order in which the current and next results are presented doesn't matter. In our tests, we randomized this order. This method could be easily extended to choose from more than two answers. When the selection and sampling processes are both carried out by the same language model, we refer to this method as self-select. We also consider other methods that are rule-based. Previous work on iterative refinement always chooses the most recent revision. Majority voting is a simple traditional method that has been used for selection, but it is expensive because it requires several samples. There are other possible ways to implement each module. Tools like web-based search or cache-based retrieval could be used to generate the initial attempt in the sampling module. A fine-tuned classification model could be used to verify outputs in the conditional resampling module. Similarly, a fine-tuned model could be used for the selection module. However, in this paper, we only study the implementations described above. We test the effectiveness and flexibility of screws on three types of reasoning tasks, GSM-8K for arithmetic reasoning, Strategy QA for multi-hop question answering, and Big Bench Auto Debugging for code debugging. The GSM-8K dataset is a set of grade school level math word problems with a test set of 1319 samples, each requiring two to eight steps to solve. GSM-8K includes sub-questions that were generated by a fine-tuned GPT-3 model and correspond to the steps in a particular correct solution. We refer to experiments using these sub-questions as sub-Q or we use sub-Q, QG, for the fairer experimental condition where we instead generated the sub-questions from chat GPT using two-shot prompts. We also test on the first 490 samples from the training set of strategy QA. The demonstration examples for our various stochastic functions psi were drawn randomly from the rest of the training set. Strategy QA also includes human annotated oracle subquestions and related facts that can assist in answering the main question. Finally, the auto debugging dataset tests whether a model can answer questions about the intermediate state of a program without executing the code. The dataset consists of 34 coding examples, of which 33 were used as test examples and one as a demonstration example in the prompt. In our experiments, we always report exact match accuracy, the percentage of examples on which our final answer matches the correct answer. For all of our experiments, we use the chat GPT API from July 2023. This model is a transformer language model that was fine-tuned using reinforcement learning with human feedback. Some experiments were also performed using GPT-4 to show the scaling capabilities of our framework. Section Summary in the tool-based LLM section, the authors explain that tools can be used in tasks like fact-checking to collect additional information or facts to help the model detect and fix problems in its generated answer. The selection module in Screws uses either a model or simple heuristics to select the final result from which the final answer is extracted, allowing for the construction of a simple ensemble of multiple systems. Section. Sampling. In our study, we used different sampling techniques for different tasks. For GSM-8K and Strategy QA, we used a five-shot sampling method, while for auto-debugging, we used a one-shot sampling method. 
we primarily used a method called greedy decoding for our main experiments. However, for some experiments, we used a slightly different approach, where we generated one sample with a temperature of 0 and the remaining four with a temperature of 0 0.7. We also used a technique called conditional resampling. Here, we first made a binary resampling decision using greedy decoding, and then proceeded to sample. For GSM 8K and Strategy QA, we used four-shot prompts, while for auto-debugging, we used a two-shot prompt. In the case of Strategy QA, we incorporated the provided facts from the dataset into the prompt to simulate a perfect fact retrieval tool. We also used a self-select strategy, where the prompts included two examples and selection was made using greedy decoding. For majority voting, we took a majority vote on the final answers from a set of samples. In case of a tie, we made a random selection. Our findings showed that conditional resampling works better when we change the method used for initial sampling. For instance, when we used a chain of thought method for initial sampling, we found that our reasoning ability improved with conditional resampling using the same method. However, when we used subquestion decomposition for initial sampling, resampling with the same method actually reduced accuracy. The best results were achieved when we used a different method for conditional resampling than the one used for initial sampling. The selection module also played a crucial role in our study. We found that conditional resampling does not always improve the output. In some cases, it may even reduce the quality of the output. This is where the selection module comes in handy, as it helps detect and reject cases of harmful revisions. We found that using a selection module to choose the better of two independent sampling strategies resulted in a significant improvement in performance. However, we also observed that the selection module is not perfect and has room for improvement. We believe that models fine-tuned specifically for selection may prove more effective than few-shot learning at identifying the features of the two answers that are correlated with correctness. We also found that there is a trade-off between accuracy and cost, as shown in our results. Section Summary. The authors used different sampling strategies for different datasets, such as five-shot sampling for GSM 8K and Strategy QA, and one-shot sampling for auto-debugging. They also employed conditional resampling, where a binary resampling decision is made using greedy decoding, and prompts with correct and incorrect samples are used. The selection module was used to select the better option between different sampling strategies, resulting in improved performance. However, the selection module is not perfect and further improvements can be made. Section. Selection and voting. Let's discuss the process of selection and voting. One of the most common selection methods used in previous studies is the unweighted majority vote, mainly because it doesn't require any training. If we look at figure A, we can see that sampling more times from the same model, at a temperature of 0.7, and selecting by majority vote generally leads to better results. Remember that the left half of the table showed that combining independent samples from two different sampling methods can improve accuracy, up to 81.34% when oracle subquestions are allowed. We found that majority voting is a handy way to combine three different methods, where all methods can now use a temperature of zero. This approach resulted in an accuracy of 83.62%, as shown by the star in figure A. However, it's worth noting that a model-based selection could potentially outperform majority voting. The seven points for k greater than or equal to 3 in figure A are repeated as the dark bars in figure B, with the light bars showing the maximum accuracy that could be achieved by replacing majority voting with a perfect selection method. The best maximum accuracy again corresponds to the use of three different methods. In theory, we could ensemble over a larger set by allowing each of the three methods to contribute multiple samples. However, we found that vanilla resampling doesn't improve what the model doesn't know, indicating a need for additional tools. For the strategy QA dataset, we noticed that accuracy is negatively affected by conditional resampling with the same sampling method, without selection, as was sometimes the case for GSM 8K. On strategy QA, even selection usually doesn't fix the problem, possibly because strategy QA requires multi-hop question answering. When the model lacks the necessary factual knowledge, self-ask will be insufficient. We found that resampling can maintain an incorrect claim generated by the model. To assist the model in deciding whether and how to revise the answer, we tried including relevant facts, provided by strategy QA, 
into the resampling prompt. This approach resulted in a two-point improvement over sampling for both COT and sub-Q, QG. We assumed that tool invocations are costly, which is why we included facts only during conditional resampling. In practice, the initial result is revised only 10 to 35% of the time, so facts doesn't need to invoke a tool call for every input example. However, if the facts were included during sampling, the performance can increase beyond 90%. For the code debugging task, we found that the answer only method achieves similar scores to COT. We didn't experiment with subquestion decomposition as subquestions are not part of this dataset. However, we saw the benefits of using screws, as we found that with answer only, adding conditional resampling followed by selection leads to a performance boost of 15 points, from 73.52 to 88.23. While the dataset size limits our ability to make concrete conclusions, the findings here support the conclusions drawn on other datasets. Resampling and selection lead to benefits and heterogeneous sampling can prove effective. Screw supports many methods with different cost accuracy trade-offs. Figure displays the strategies that use COT and SubQ, QG, on GSM 8K. The cost is represented as the total count of input tokens, prompt plus query, and output tokens for all LLM calls needed by that strategy, averaged over test examples. Generally, Sub-Q, QG, is expensive as it is costly to call psi underscore question. However, it is affordable to use it in conditional resampling only, since resampling only occurs 10 to 15% of the time. This method is both cheaper and more accurate than sampling either with sub-Q, QG, or three times with COT. We saw in the section on GSM 8K that sampling with sub-Q, or 78.62% accuracy, is slightly improved by conditional resampling with COT, 78.99%, and then selection, 79.22%. Like before, we didn't find much benefit from additional iterations of conditional resampling plus selection. A second iteration gives 79.45%, and a third gives 79.52%. These small improvements probably do not justify the added cost. Section Summary the section discusses the use of selection and voting methods in machine learning models. Majority voting is a popular selection method that does not require training and can improve accuracy when sampling from the same model multiple times. However, model-based selection could potentially achieve even better results. Additionally, the section explores the use of resampling and selection in the strategy QA dataset, where including relevant facts during conditional resampling can improve performance. The effectiveness of different methods and their cost accuracy trade offs are also discussed. Section 6.3 Larger LLMs. We've made some interesting discoveries while working with larger language models, LLMs. When we replaced Chat GPT with GPT 4, we saw a significant improvement in the sampling accuracy on the GSM 8K dataset. The accuracy increased to 91.45 for COT and 90.80 for SubQ, or when we used GPT-4 for selection between these two samples, the accuracy further increased to 93.10. This accuracy falls between the accuracy achieved when using majority voting over three and four caught samples from GPT-4, which were 92.94 and 93.93 respectively. Even when we used chat GPT for selection, we achieved an accuracy of 92.58, which is still an improvement over using caught alone. We've also included some examples to illustrate the effectiveness of the selection module. The first example shows how an error introduced by conditional resampling can be corrected by selection. The second example demonstrates how a correction found by conditional resampling can be maintained by selection. The final example shows that ordinary resampling is unlikely to correct an incorrect fact generated by the LLM. However, if we provide the correct facts during resampling, the model can access new information and generate the correct answer. Based on our experiments with three reasoning datasets using our framework, we've made several key findings. 1. Selection plays a crucial role. Although conditional resampling often improves the result of sampling, selection can help avoid errors when it does not. This was beneficial on all three datasets. 2. Using different reasoning methods for sampling and conditional resampling can lead to higher accuracy, with or without selection. 3. 
Resampling cannot fix incorrect facts generated by the model. Therefore, tool-based resampling can yield better results. 4. There was no one-size-fits-all strategy. Simple baseline methods sometimes outperformed more complex ones. Looking ahead, our SCREWS framework combines the three important modules, sampling, conditional resampling, and selection. The best configuration of these modules will vary by task and could be identified through methods such as exhaustive search, Monte Carlo tree search, or reinforcement learning. The modules themselves could be fine-tuned to improve overall performance. If we want to optimize both cost and accuracy, we could use several methods to speed up the stochastic function's psi. For example, the LLM cascade strategy starts with smaller, cheaper models. It's also possible that for some reasoning tasks, additional modules could be useful. For instance, we could proceed resampling or selection with critiquing, or generalize selection to combination. 